Aloha, good morning. Happy Aloha Friday. I'm Yenji Denise, joined by Ryan Kalei Suji. Thank you so much for joining us on the platform of the Honolulu Star Advertiser for the COVID-19 Care Conversation brought to you by the Hawaii Executive Collaborative and Hawaii Pacific Health. We are so glad to be with you this morning and we have two very special guests, Ryan. That's right. We have uh, both Representative Kyle Yamashita as well as Senator Keith Algaran joining us uh, this morning to talk a little bit more about some of the efforts that the legislature is making to help to move along some of the capital improvement projects and some of the larger public spending projects that uh, were sort of put on hold during the time of the pandemic when it first broke up, broke out. We know that the legislature kind of went on a pause. They're back in session right now. We're going to talk a little bit more to them about some of the efforts that's being made right now at the Hawaii State Capitol to move some of those efforts together. Again, we wanna thank our sponsors for allowing us to have this conversation. Of course, that's the Hawaii Executive Collaborative and Hawaii Pacific Health. Uh, this is really a way for you to engage with our guests. So we encourage you, if you have questions for the representative and Senator to please enter your comments here. It's the first time we're actually doing two guests. So crossing our fingers, everything works out. So far, I think we're good to go. But one of the things that we always like to do is we start off with the count. And again, uh, a pretty historic day, if you will, yesterday with uh, just no, uh, with no cases actually reported. Yeah, wonderful to see no cases reported in the islands. We have 637 positive cases since the outbreak began, 17 deaths, no new deaths to report to you. Single digit cases for almost a month now. And to see zero really does mean that we are flattening the curve and if anything, trending downward. Nearly 90% of the people who've been infected have, infected have recovered. So good news all around. That's right, good news all around. And again, thank you to everyone who's already chiming in and uh, talking to, sending in your comments. Let us know where you're watching from this morning. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we have two guests joining us. Uh, both are actually represent the island of Maui, but of course they are here in Oahu. We have Representative Kyle, uh, Kyle Yamashita who's joining with us now and uh, Senator as well. Senator Keith Algron is here as well. So good morning, Representative and Senator. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first off, I'm going to start off with uh, you, uh, Representative Yamashita. Talk a little bit about some of the efforts that are being made uh, right now, what's happening right now in the Capitol and some of the things that you're primarily working on during this sort of uh, condensed se special session. Yeah, so, so most of the efforts is um, on the budget, uh, um, allocating the money for the CARES Act um, and uh, figuring out how we're going to deal with the shortfall. So we just um, actually passed, um, passed it out of the House and and these agreements have been, um, you know, because it's a it's a condensed session. These agreements already have been kind of worked out with the Senate. So uh, it's it's basically um, taking funds from all different places and putting it uh, into the rainy day fund so that we can uh, deal with that at some point. We're going to be waiting for um, additional information from the administration so that we can um, put together a better comprehensive plan of how we're going to deal with the shortfall. But also, right, we have other other challenges. Um, with uh, unemployment, which is huge, and um, how we're gonna fill those gaps and those kind of things. So um, I think we're moving along. And um, the other thing that um, the Senator and I have been working on is putting together a capital budget. And I think that's the main reason why we're here to talk about those things, but uh, that's kind of what we're working on. Yeah, so Senator, if we can talk uh, more to you about some of those uh, funds and some of the things that you folks are trying to do to help move these projects along. We know that a big part of helping to keep Hawaii moving are some of these uh, you know, these capital fund projects uh, to help the economy move and help these, this industry continue on. Talk a little bit about that. What are some of the things that you folks are trying to help to move those things along in the processes to help ensure that these projects get funded and they get greenlit to sort of move forward? Yes, because construction is one of the few areas that the state actually can directly impact the, the economy and providing these projects and funding them is important. One of the things we started off with at the beginning of the year, I think, was talking about where we could uh, pay for infrastructure that will help housing. And in this budget, we we were able to maintain that. We've got about $100 million going into West Oahu to help with infrastructure there that will move the housing projects forward, as well as some of the school projects that have been waiting to have some of those connections done. In addition, we, I think we've allocated about $50 million to the neighbor islands, Kyle, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
You know, there's been a lot of talk of shovel ready projects. Um, can you explain to our audience what that actually means and what are the kinds of projects we can expect to see uh, get up and running? Yeah, so I think what the, um, the reason why the shovel ready comes up is because we want to keep our construction uh, industry moving. So one of the things that I looked at was, you know, historically what happened in um, 2009, 10 and 11 when we had the last uh, economic downturn. And if you look at the numbers of total construction in 2007 and 2008, there was about $8 million of total construction in the state of Hawaii at that time. And um, of that, um, the state's portion was about, you know, about a billion dollars, give or take, and, and it represented about 14, 12% around it, depending on the year. But then um, when the economic downturn happened, uh, construction fell as low as like $5.6 billion. So it dramatically dropped a lot. And uh, where the state helped was we, we continued to fund projects that could keep construction moving. So um, while, while, while uh, those numbers dropped in totality, the, the state was able to, even though we were straight uh, strapped for uh, cash too at that time, we were able to keep um, funding at, a, um, I think it was like 1.1, 1.3, as high as $1.3 billion dollars. A year at that time. So our goal this year was to kind of do that also to kind of look at the um, project. So we we asked all the departments to uh, give us a list, and I I think we we put that out in um, our COVID committee report is um, how, how many projects are ready to move and things like that. So that that was like a, um, a total list of project that had potential to move. Uh, what the senator and I did was we kind of. Uh, narrowed it down and did, did it a little more strategic as far as what projects uh, could move because at, at the same time we we'd like to do them all but we're limited by resources so we we, we kind of got to figure out right we only can put out so much money in bond funding at, at a time and then going into the future i think we wanted to also have uh projects in the pipe to deal with future um you know next year and the following year and that year after that what kind of an impact do you think this will actually have? And when we talk about, you know, getting these up and running, um, how much money do you think you can get into the economy and how many actual jobs are we are we creating or saving? Well, the jobs, uh, you know, I, I don't have those numbers, but, you know, we can get that uh, we can get that to you at some uh, later time. But uh, we, we're, we're trying to keep that number in that area, maybe about, you know, one 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 billion, one point four is uh, in, in state projects to keep that moving. Now, uh, what the private sector will be doing, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, for example, in 2018, we, um, the total construction project at that time was like 9.5 billion. So uh, it grew from you know where it was at 8 billion in 2007 and eight. So uh, and we, I, think, we, I think you can see over the last two months that construction has continued on some of the islands. So you can see that those people have continued continue to work, they've been able to, to support their families. And that's one of the important things that we're aiming at is to keep one sector of the economy moving as we wait for the recovery for the rest of it. Um, I, that's one part, and especially because in, in the construction industry also has the advantage of they're used to OSHA requirements for safety. So they're used to using what we, what everyone's learning now what PPEs are. People in construction in a lot of areas are already used to that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Senator, I want to ask you, um, you know, one of the things, of course, that we're hearing is about the tax revenues that are coming in, uh, the budget shortfall. Th does that projection uh, for this year impact any of these projects right now? Or are all those funds uh, sort of allocated, meaning like, are, you know, are you putting aside some of that money because of those projected shortfalls? How does that and sort of the projections moving forward maybe impact some of the allocations that are happening now for the projects that are currently in front of you? Well, we once we give once we authorize these projects, it'll still be up to the governor and the administration to implement them. And the governor has a lot of authority and he's going to be monitoring the revenues coming in and out that will that will be needed to support the debt service that will be involved. And the administration will have to go out and sell sell bonds at some point. And they've got a bond uh, purchase, they've got a bond sales plan over the next six years that should be enough to take care of all the projects that are being authorized. But again, it will be up to the governor to decide when to implement these projects. 
You know, on a practical level, um, just so that people understand process a little bit, um, you know, the session was basically abruptly interrupted, of course, because of cor the coronavirus, but you already did have a lot of bills that crossed over. So can you tell us what's going to be happening to the legislation that sort of already made it partially through? It's not something that um, you're necessarily addressing this week, as far as I understand, but those bills aren't really dead, are they? No, um, this... This portion of the session was just to handle the state budget, the operating, uh, the operating portion, as well as the capital, as well as deal with the CARES Act and a number of other, other bills related to it. But all the bills that crossed over are still technically alive and can be taken up when we return in June to complete the session. And that's um, what I think um, we've already noted that with, with the way the revenues are, in the shortfall, if a bill had funding attached to it, then it's unlikely that bill will be moving forward. But there are a lot of other bills that are very important that still need to be considered. Um, there are bills that um, will extend sunset dates. There are bills that will address um, whether sale of sales of um, permits and um, land leases from the Department of Land and Natural Resources are approved by the legislature. Those um, need to be dealt with before we leave uh, the current session. I want to ask a question that we got a lot of comments on in the past of people asking about certain specific projects. One of the projects, of course, that's making a lot of headlines is the new Aloha Stadium. And we know sort of the processes that has gone through and how quickly that, you know, officials are trying to move that project through. What happens to the status of sort of Aloha Stadium now? with all, factoring in all, all these components? Yeah, um, the previous appropriation is still in place. I think all we did was there was an appropriation for, because we needed cash. Um, there was an appropriation for $20 million in cash um, that we converted to bond funding uh, just for cash flow purposes, but it, it will not slow the project down per se. And I think um, it is still a priority of the legislature to keep that moving. When we Oh, sorry, have the RFP opening scheduled, so we'll see what happens. I mean, it's possible. Hopefully, the um, the the price in the RFP will come in um, within the amount of money that we've allocated. Yeah, and it, if I can go back to the previous question, you know, one of the things that you know will be a deciding factor. The reason why there's a pause till June is we're waiting for kind of two things. One is um, on May 28th, the Council of Revenues will come out with their projections of what the revenues will be for going forward. And that'll be an indicator for the legislature to figure out how to, if we need to tweak or adjust the budget we just passed. So that's that's one reason, that's also the other reason we're coming back. But the other uh, factor that we're waiting for is to see what the feds do in the next iteration of the CARES Act. If there is um, additional monies that will uh, help the states fill its budget shortfalls. And that'll be huge if there's anything. So those are, that's what kind of what, why we're waiting till June also. Well, the possibility is also they'll give us more flexibility in using the money they've already given us. And right. I think that's the other thing we're looking for. Right. I know both of you have been in government for some time. What are you hearing from your constituents in terms of the needs on the ground and how can the legislature, legislature actually address those? Because, you know, every week we have, uh, Scott Murakami on here from the Department of Labor and Industrial Relations. And of course, we know the numbers when it comes to people who have applied for unemployment. We see those lines at Aloha Stadium for free food. Um, you know, now every Wednesday and Friday, thanks to the food bank and other uh, community partners who have stepped in. Um, but what I'm curious to hear, especially because you do represent neighbor island communities, what you're hearing from your constituents and what you think that lawmakers like yourselves can actually do to help those folks right now. Well, mechanically, I think right now, um, what, what you need to consider is when the CARES Act was created, it was created for the rest of the, how the rest of the country operates. And one of the unique things that Hawaii has is we're a very centralized state where education, community hospitals, jails, traffic court, and even EMS are primarily paid for at the state level. level. All across the country, these major services, which are big uh, budget items, are paid for at the county level. So a lot of the CARES Act, a good portion was given to the counties because across the country, that's how it works. So uh, we allocated a proportionate share uh, um, because the city and county got their, their share automatically. 
And um, what we're hoping and we're asking the counties to do is all those other things that you just talked about where to help families uh, cover rent or food or other things like that, because they don't have to pay for those services that the state has to worry about, that they pick up those kind of things. So I, we're, we're hoping for and we're encouraging the counties to do is to use that money that is allocated to them for those purposes. And I think that'll be huge to help stabilize the economy. And I Are you getting, entire, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, and, and the entire delegation on Maui, for example, has been working fairly closely with the, the, with the mayor and the county council there to, to really work on things, the basic needs of people. I think we were, we've all been involved in distributing food. We've all been involved in uh, making calls for constituents who are having trouble with the UI system, which means a lot of people. And we've all been involved in a lot of the regular community things that we need to do. I think uh, you you grew up in the Big Island, so you know how close um, the communities are. So it, it's one of those things where it's, it just comes natural that uh, when people see us um, when we are when we we weren't in that quarantine and we're out, that you know they talk to us and they ask us what's going on because I think what people want to know is information. People want to know that. Um, that people that the government actually has an idea of where we're going to be going from here. So I think we're fairly pleased with um, a lot of what our, our mayor has done, although I wish he'd open up a few more parks. Um, there's still a few parks that need to be opened, and I think there's a lot of people that still want to get to the beach. Yeah, interesting to see what happens kind of moving forward with some of those orders being lifted. Uh, and, and we know that we see almost announcements every day that are some, somewhat happening and coming from those county levels. Uh, just like sort of maybe a final thought from uh, both of you on sort of the next steps. Uh, we know that you guys are sort of in the middle of it now. What are sort of the next steps ha here in the process and uh, when will things sort of wrap up for you folks? Well, we each took on a couple of bills. Uh, I think we took on the state budget as both the operating and the CIP budget. And we pass that out and that will be going to our floor and then being sent over to the house for their final look at it. Um, if there's still some problems, we can always go to conference. And I think uh, on, on, on the other end, the house will be passing over the work they've done on the CARES Act as well as the supplemental budget for the judiciary. And then we'll get a chance to take a look at that before we take another recess next week. Yeah, so I, I think, um... Uh, a lot will be done um, in, in the next, uh, you know, a lot of the work has been done already as far as those bills. Um, and, and, and in my opinion, right now, it's going to be minor tweaks because, again, we're going to be waiting for those two indicators, the council revenue and then what, what the feds do. And, and then also during that um, break we have before June, we'll be looking at bills, again, that are going to be essential uh, timing wise um, or maybe even bills that maybe had money. Um, but maybe just to put the mechanism in place to have to start discussion and then put the money in next year when we return. And I We're know saying, that we, oh, sorry. sorry. And I know that we've done a lot of the confirmations of the boards and commissions, but there's still going to be a few more that need to be done when we come back in June. Uh, I just want to bring in one comment here. This is from Jesse Broder Van Dyke uh, saying that they, you guys have been doing Zoom meetings. Check out the Hawaii Senate Facebook and YouTube pages. There are a lot of people who suddenly find themselves wanting to engage in government in a way that they perhaps never had. They may not even know who their representative is, but now they absolutely want to know because they have ideas and concerns about their community. So um, how do people get in touch with you? Tell us about those Zoom meetings and, and how they continue this conversation because there could be um, people here who have very specific concerns and they want to then they want to talk to their own representatives. Well, they can always contact us at our phone numbers and our email addresses, but we've also, a, a number of um, our members have held uh, town meetings virtually using Zoom, using YouTube. And um, I think uh, the, this, this week, I think the Senate has been using Zoom actually for some of our hearings. Um, I think uh, in, other, in, other, in other parts of it, we've been just taking written testimony, but I think we're slowly getting uh, getting up to speed, and that's one of the big challenges because uh, we're limited in our resources in, in, in doing a live feed of 
two hearings at a time, if, uh, if is what we've been told. But it, it does tell us that there's a lot of interest and there's probably, that's probably one area where the legislature needs to put more resources in, in the future because, and for, some, for the two of us who are from the neighbor islands, yeah, we have a lot of people who, if they could participate in the legislative process without having to fly to Oahu, that'd be great. And they can have their input um, live. Um, and then the technology is getting better because there's always a concern that um, if technology breaks down, um, I, I think under the Sunshine Law, we technically would have to stop the hearing and then reschedule it. Yeah, I think, you know, we have to uh, find that balance. So there, there are a lot of great things that we're learning from, you know, this new reality, but um, how to communicate with our, uh, uh, using technology to communicate with our constituents. But at the same time, you know, being from the neighbor islands, there are always challenges that we are separated by water. And, you know, you always hear that um, there, it's kind of Oahu centric and um, we, and, and to some degree it's true where you you kind of got to be in the building to participate because sometimes some of the conversations just happen because you walk in the hall or you're you're just there so that balance of this uh, new way of, of communicating and dealing with things but at the same time there's value in in being um you know all together in one place where we can we can uh, uh converse you know on the fly if you will yeah yeah well, let's hope for the day where we can all sort of be back together again, hopefully that <laughs> sooner rather than later. Well, Representative Yamashita, Senator uh, Algaran, Keith Algaran, thank you so much for joining us, taking time out of your schedule to be here and, and uh, informing our public about some of the efforts that's being happening, going on right now at the Capitol. So thank you. Happy Aloha Friday. We'll talk to you folks later. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much work to be done. And as they said, they're focusing specifically right now on the CARES Act funding, where that money goes, how to continue to infuse the economy with whatever funding the federal government has handed down um, and those shovel ready projects. What's interesting, they sent out a release uh, about midweek, I believe it was Wednesday, talking about the kinds of projects. You're looking at anything from building a building to actually fixing an IT system. So it doesn't necessarily mean a literal shovel, but there is a lot of construction work that uh, we should expect to see around the state. And I think that will be welcome, welcome to see anybody working right now. Yeah, and again, uh, a point of clarification too, that this sort of condensed session is, is really to address some of those projects and that some of the other bills that had been uh, going through the moving through the legislature will actually sort of still be on hold and that they will actually be resuming in June once again to sort of address those. The money issues, those are, uh, and, and the money bills, that's gonna be sort of the area where things may get a little sticky because a lot of that will already have been allocated. So a lot of it will be more procedural things, um, maybe potentially new laws that are gonna be put into place but again, a lot of that all put on hold because of the, uh, you know, the, the things that have happened in the past few months with COVID-19. And so, like everyone else, the legislature is trying to find new ways to adjust to this reality, including some of these neighbor island Zoom conferences and ways to interact with people not all physically being here on Oahu. Yeah. We also want to get to a few other headlines before we leave you on this Friday. Uh, Mayor Kirk Caldwell making plenty of news yesterday, extending the safer at home order, but also announcing some openings that he hopes happen, um, including restaurants the first week of June, but saying basically that he wants to uh, extend the order through June 30th. Uh, Governor Ige saying that he plans to do the same. Yeah, and again, Mayor Caldwell also going as far as to talking about some of the things that he's requesting of the governor, including the potential opening of some of these restaurants and sit down establishments and proposing some plans for having outdoor uh, areas for people and, and guests to sort of come in and eat and partake in while keeping social distancing. But again, under this uh, new proclamation that the governor signed a, a few weeks back, the counties now have to basically go to the governor for approval in order to kind of create some sort of consistency with the messaging that's coming up because we saw that there has been a few hiccups and some crosses in uh, the way that orders and communications are being handed out. So the mayor making it known publicly, the things that he's asking of the governor will be talking to the governor here on Monday once again to get his take on that and to see if some of those proposals that the mayor has put forth will actually be greenlit. One of the exciting things that I think a lot of people were happy to hear the mayor announced yesterday was the opening of these uh, parks and these abilities to do one-on-one -on -one sports and exercise activities. 
Again, that's sort of things like one-on-one -on -one pickleball and Tai Chi does not include one-on-one -on -one basketball because you need to still continue your social distancing, but yoga where it's allowed, um, where you can practice those social distancing. So we can expect to see uh, probably more people heading out there into the parks actually beginning today because that's when the order sort of got released. So we're, again, we're slowly beginning to see some of these things take effect. Yeah, and uh, of course we expect retail, that today is the 15th, so retail is opening um, you know, across Oahu, a lot of malls are now holding um, limited hours. And it's interesting to see the different retailers, how they're handling that, allowing only a certain number of people in the stores, really advising cashless exchanges. Um, if you can pay through your phone or through a credit card, um, but instead of using cash, because they really just want to limit, you know, person to person contact, but still those retailers need to make some money. They've been closed for so long. So we're seeing, you know, Kahala Mall, Pearl Ridge, Ala Moana Center and others start to open up in addition to some of the, you know, smaller strip malls and what have you. So we'll see how that goes in the coming days. And we've asked some representatives from retail to come and join us to talk about what that actually looks like on the ground and what shopping will look like uh, over the, ne the next weeks and months. Yeah, another, a lot of things happening today. Another thing happening today, a food drive, again, that is happening at Aloha Stadium. Um, for more details, of course, you can always head over to the Food Bank's website at foodbank, hawaiifoodbank.org for more details. This is happening Wednesday and Friday. It is once again at Aloha Stadium. Uh, we see thousands of people that show up uh, every time these drives are held. So it, it really goes to illustrate the need in the community right now. So it's actually opened at 10 o'clock, so encourage me. There might already be a long line. Of course, people waiting as early as 7 a.m., uh, the three hours, two to three hours before the gates even open. So we know that there are long lines there, but that's happening right now at Aloha Stadium. Yeah, and we also want to encourage you, if you happen to miss one of these food drives or, or uh, the food distributions, or if it's intimidating to get into a line like that, the Hawaii Food Bank does have 200 different distribution sites throughout the islands. Um, so you can go over to their website, find out where you can um, find a smaller distribution that might be more suited to your family's needs. Um, and also, if you don't have the resources to sit in traffic for that long, um, not everybody, of course, has access to a vehicle uh, or can make that kind of a time commitment. So head over to their website and uh, and see that, that you get the resources that you need. One of the things we always like to do is highlight the hero of the day. And yesterday, if you looked into the sky, you may have seen the Hawaii Air National Guard, you see them there, uh, an active duty Air Force saying a big mahalo to the healthcare workers and frontline responders with that beautiful flyover. Uh, that's right, I mean, and actually it's something that has been happening throughout the country. Of course, there are heroes not only uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic and for their efforts here. But every day we appreciate the service that they provide for our community and for our country. But uh, yeah, a great show. Uh, you could definitely hear them yesterday at, out in the sky. And it was nice to see actually some of the hospitals had their workers go to the rooftops so that they could see this go into their yards. Uh, so it was a nice display of just appreciation again for our health uh, our healthcare workers. So they are also, of course, our heroes. So we want to Mahalo them, as well as um, this wonderful flower that happened yesterday. Yeah, and as Ryan mentioned, we do have the governor co coming on on Monday. We have Scott Murakami joining us again on Tuesday. It, we want to talk to him a lot about uh, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, the PUA program, because we know that money is actually starting to be distributed to people here in Hawaii through that program, or at least notification that money is coming. So, um, you know, we want to address a lot of those questions. So if you have the specific questions on that system, please send them to us. We're also going to be looking back through last Tuesday's show uh, to look for specific questions that may not have been answered in that program. Then on Wednesday, we have a doctor joining us. And Thursday, another doctor, uh, Dr. Jennifer Kang from Hawaii Pacific Health is joining us on Wednesday. Thursday, Dr. Sarah Park, the state epidemiologist, is going to be joining us. You know, we really wanted to talk to her to get a very scientific perspective on how the virus is spreading in Hawaii, what her thoughts are about um, you know, testing and tracing and what's being done. There's been a lot of political conflict, but we want to go to the pure science with Dr. Park. So we're really looking forward to that conversation with her. Yeah, a lot of dialogue happening between how much tests that should be taking place. We know that the mayor yesterday, again, calling for more testing, more tracing that needs to happen. And so we want to hear directly from the Department of Health specifically and hear some of their efforts, because as we move into the reopening, uh, of many of these establishments and businesses, it's gonna be important to sort of gauge and see 
where we are uh, with these daily counts and what the Department of Health continues to do in their efforts to make sure that everyone is safe. So looking forward to that conversation as well. Uh, again, we appreciate everybody commenting. Uh, again, we like this to be a place where we can help to uh, you know, further the discussion and move it along and try to find ways where you can connect with them. We know that there are a lot of opinions out there and people that are very passionate during this time. And we certainly appreciate uh, your passion and, and our, we know that people are struggling and it is our hopes just to connect people and to inform people and really to move the conversation forward with questions that will help to advance that. So we wanna thank you all for taking time out of your day to join us here and uh, join us every day. We have a lot of people that have become loyal viewers and we have uh, really appreciate joining uh, you in this process as we sort of navigate through COVID-19 together. So uh, until next week, Monday at 1030, we wish you a great Aloha Friday, have a great weekend and we'll see you back here next week. Aloha. Stay safe out there, Aloha.